Christmas the Savior will come Christmas a baby in a stable Lying in straw in a manger Jesus the Lord will be born High up in the skies above The voices of angels will sing Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth High up in the skies above The voices of angels will sing Glory to God in the highest And peace to his people on earth To all the destitute Crying to him salvation To all the destitute Hope he brings and resurrence Christmas the Savior will come Christmas a baby in a stable Lying in straw in a manger Jesus the Lord will be born High up in the skies above, the voices of angels will sing. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Are we ready to receive the great moment <coughs> of the Nativity? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in the last moment of our preparation. In few hours, we are celebrating the great feast of the nativity of our Savior. And in these last moments, let us examine how much I have prepared myself to receive the Lord. What did I truly prepare? Did I prepare only the church? Did I prepare only the house or did I truly be prepare my own heart? The Lord wants not anything external but something more personal and something more internal. He wants our heart. Can we make our heart a crib for him? If we have not yet ready for this, at least in these last moments, let us prepare ourselves by calling our mind, our sins and failures, and ask, asking God for the forgiveness and for the mercy. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who live and reign with the God and the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 5, and 8 to 12, and 14 to 16. A reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 5, 8 to 12, and 14 to 16. Now, when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the Lord said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart. For the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be Prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you want, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. A violent man shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will rise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response shall be, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your mercy is established forever. Your fidelity stands firm as the heavens. Your response, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. With my chosen one, I have made a covenant. I have sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your descendants forever and set up your throne through all ages. Your response, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. He will call on out to me. You are my Father, my God, the rock of my salvation. I will keep my faithful love for him always. With him, my covenant shall last. Your response, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will we'll sing, sing forever, forever of, of your, your mercies, mercies, O Lord. O Lord. Hallelujah, 
Haleluya, 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 Haleluya. O radiant dawn, splendor of eternal life, son of justice. Come and shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, verses from 67 to 79. At that time, Zechariah, father of John, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us prepare a beautiful heart for the birth of our Savior. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are on the last day of the season of Advent. Today, the 24th, and in a few hours, we are going to celebrate the great feast of the Nativity of the Lord. The Lord has come to visit us. The God of mercy is amidst us the Emmanuel, God with us. And this is a beautiful message we have for today. That the Lord is coming to be among us. But what is our preparation? What is our stand? What do we truly prepare for Him? When He comes, what do we give? We have almost completed all the Christmas preparations, beginning with the season of Advent, the first Sunday of Advent, the carols, the crib making, the decorations, the lighting, everything is ready. And in a few moments, we are ready even for the vigil service of awaiting the Lord. Very good. But at this moment, 
just before his arrival into the world, Jesus is asking every one of us, are you ready with a beautiful heart prepared and decorated for me? What is our answer? Therefore, my dear friends in Christ, God does not want a big, big churches to be lived in. God does not want gorgeous houses and wonderful palaces to be born. We see how simple and how poor and how humble he makes himself. He comes to us in our human form. He comes to us in a little way. He comes to us in the hidden way. And he comes to us in the mysterious way. Therefore we call today the mystery of incarnation. That is the attitude of the divinity. So that we humans partake in the divine nature of the sun and become participants of the eternal kingdom. Therefore, what do we prepare for him? <coughs> what is a present? What is a gift? We have packed for Christ. For the baby Jesus, what are we going to offer? The answer should be for today, not for tomorrow. And the entire season of Advent and special way, the readings of today, give us the nourishment, how to prepare our little hearts for the coming of the Savior. We see in the first reading of today, God asking King David, can you build a house for me? Are you worthy to build a temple for me? You with a human thinking, you with a human mind, you with a human power, you with the human resources, can you build a temple for the Almighty God? Many times we also think this way. The Christmas is coming, we have to keep the temple ready. The Christmas is coming. We have to keep the crib ready. The Christmas is coming. We have to keep new clothes ready. The Christmas is coming. We have to prepare the sweets and be ready. But what is the true gift that God wants from us? And he says, in the first reading of today, we understand two important points, my dear friends in Christ. First one, the conversation between the King David and the Prophet Nathan. King David is living in a big palace, wonderful house. And he says that the Ark of the Covenant is somewhere hidden. Now, with all his majesty, with all his power, he thought he could do anything without God's consultation. He says, I want to build. The Lord should be in a beautiful house. The Lord should be in a big palace. I want to be, build a big palace to him, a big temple. And he consults not the divine, but the human person, that is the prophet Nathan. He calls the prophet and says, this is my idea. This is my desire that the Lord does not stay in the camps outside the town, but he stays within the temple it becomes a wonderful place for him. And a prophet is also human. With a human mind. And with a human logic. He says, you are the king. You have power. You have everything. Go and do whatever you want. And that is the human prophecy. That very night, we see the intervention of God 
he appears to Nathan and says, go and tell my servant David, he is not the one who has to build my house. Because he is not worthy. He has made his hands dirty with the blood. And he is not the one who has to prepare the house for me. I will tell in the time what to prepare for me. Therefore, it is God who desires, it is God who desires, and it is God who plans, and it is God who fulfills. The plan and the fulfillment is from the mind of God, from not, the, not from the human mind. That's what we see. He says, your son will build a house for me, not you. And that's the first thing. And David, understanding and accepting God's will, he prepares everything ready for the temple of the Lord. And we see the second moment in the first reading of today, God's promise, one about the temporal kingdom, the second about the eternal kingdom. He says two things here. First of all, your son will build a house for me. Therefore, it is about King Solomon who is building the great temple of Jerusalem. And he says, again, I will bring an offspring from your clan and I will raise up a kingdom which lasts forever. But the kingdom of David or the kingdom, the temple of Jerusalem were destroyed. Therefore, the promise was only temporal which was given to King David. But the promise of the eternal kingdom is about the son of David, Jesus. And that happens today, my dear friends, in Christ. And that's what even Angel Gabriel gives the message. We see in the scene of Annunciation, Angel Gabriel comes and tells Mary, his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. He will raise up the throne of David. Therefore, the promise is fulfilled in the coming of the Savior, Jesus. These two moments in the first reading of today. It is not the human being who can build a house for God, first thing. Secondly, when God builds the house, it is not temporal, but permanent. His dynasty, his power, his mercy, his love will be forever. And today, as we are preparing for the coming feast of the nativity, God is asking us, you just offer your mind and heart. I will prepare my own house. Therefore, just like uh, the King David prepared all the necessary material so that King Solomon was able to complete the building of the temple, so also we have to prepare the materials for the coming of the Savior. Not just a crib, not just a church, not just the beautiful decorated house, but moreover the heart purified with the conversion and with the word of God. And in the second reading of today, that is gospel, we find another important aspect. We have another personality of the nativity, Zechariah. In the season of Advent, we have reflected upon so many personalities. We have reflected upon the prophet Isaiah. We have reflected upon John the Baptist. We have reflected upon Mary. And we will also reflect during the night. And also Elizabeth, especially in the last Sunday. And today, we also reflect upon Zechariah. 
all these personalities have one common thing. They are all filled with the Holy Spirit. Which means, they are ready and being filled with the Holy Spirit, they have prepared the way for the Lord. We see Mary how fill, be, being filled with the Holy Spirit, she consents to the will of the Father saying, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. That is a disposition of Mary because she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And we see Elizabeth, how she was filled with the Holy Spirit and then acclaims the greatness of the Lord, telling that you are blessed among the women and blessed is the fruit of your womb and you are the mother of the Lord. Therefore, being filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth acclaims how beautifully Mary was chosen by God to be the mother. And today we have another personality, Zechariah. And when we read the gospel reading of today, we understand two things. The first one, Zechariah proclaims the promise of the Old Testament and also announces the coming of the new Savior. Such a beautiful thing. Once we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we cannot but proclaim the mercies of the Lord. Once we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we cannot but give glory to God. Our mouth is full, full, filled with the words of the prophet. We see how Zechariah tells, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He has visited and redeemed his people. And that is the message for today. God visits us to be with us. God redeems us so that we are with him. And that is the proper nativity, my, my dear friends, in Christ. Therefore, he tells, as God has promised to our forefathers, beginning from Abraham, as he has foretold, he has accomplished his plan of salvation. Now, in person, he has come to show us his mercy. And he is also talking about the child, the child baby. Like a son of justice, you have come to visit us to show the mercy and forgiveness of the father. Therefore, Zechariah talks about two things. First one, the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Second one, what the Savior is going to do. And that we find here. When the Christ comes, what does he do? He leads the people in the knowledge of salvation. He leads the people in the mercy of God. He leads the people in the forgiveness and pardon of the Father. Finally, he leads the people in the way of peace. These four elements are very important. When Christ comes, we have salvation, we have pardon, we have mercy, and we have peace. And that is the day of nativity. And today, my dear friends in Christ, as we prepare ourselves for the birth of the Savior, do we really keep our hearts ready? God does not want something ex external, something outside. He wants your heart. He wants your mind. He wants your soul. He wants your body. Can we offer all these things so that there is a true Christmas for all of us? Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. God, our loving Father, we thank you and praise you for all the gifts you have, you have given to us. 
in the special manner the greatest gift you have given to us is your son jesus your only begotten son thank you father as we as we are going to celebrate his nativity fill us with your spirit so that we prepare our hearts as a crib for his coming we pray to you lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer god our loving father we pray for your church bless our pope francis our bishops the clergy the religious the entire people of god help us to become truly the testimonies of your mercy lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer god our loving father we thank you and praise you for the peace in the world we pray again to establish that eternal peace in the world especially in the time of this pandemic bless our world with your mercy show your mercy and save us lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer god our loving father in a special way we pray for this divyavani tv channel the gift you have given to us bless everyone who is working here bless their mind bless their actions bless their endeavors bless all the people who are working for it directly or indirectly so that through this channel your word may be diffused all through the world lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer god our loving father we offer to you our families in a special manner the families which are divided with a lot of commotions with a lot of misunderstandings bless all those families let your peace reign in their houses let your mercy reign in their hearts so that they become united lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer in the silence of our hearts let us pray for our personal needs let us pray we thank you and praise you the father the father of mercy you are the merciful god you have come to visit us in your son jesus help us to extend our hearts and hands so that we also enter into the lives of others to make them your children we make this prayer through christ our lord amen, amen. Lord we pray to you Accept this number games We place before you Lord Make them holy Lord Lord we pray to you work of a human hands fruits of the earth we bring you lord see no the unworthy hearts accept them and save us lord lord we pray to you accept this humble gifts we place before you lord make them holy lord lord we pray to you
pray dear brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to god the almighty father may the lord accept the, the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and our good of all his holy church graciously make your own o lord the offerings which we bring that partaking of them we be cleansed of our sins and made it to stand ready with the pure hearts for the coming in glory of your son who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for all the oracles of the prophets foretold to him the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling john the baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came it is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise and so with the angels and archangels with the thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. When we eat His bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Your death, Lord Jesus. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul Antony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses. As, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us, and lead us not into <coughs> temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from, from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself to you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to us who find new vigor, O Lord, in these your wondrous gifts, that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your son's nativity, so we may possess in gladness his everlasting rewards, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and live in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Wake up, oh people, the Lord is very near. Wake up and stand for the Lord. Wake up, oh people, the Lord is very near. Wake up and stand for the Lord. Your living Lord is near. Wake up, His glory will appear. Wake up. Grace is near, that is never was. Wake up, O oh people, the Lord is very near. Wake up and stand for the Lord. Wake up, O oh people.